Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session on hacking and uh, hackers. And uh, we all hear a lot about hacking and hackers within especially the last uh, few years. And we are hearing a lot of news about the attacks against the United States companies and uh, to the critical infrastructure. And uh, first of all, I'd like to start with a short uh, video on a sample cyber attack. And we are going to talk about hacking and hackers. Now to the issue of cyber attacks and the stunning news that the giant meat producer JBS paid $11 million in ransom to get its plants back online. A cybersecurity company says there were more than seven ransomware attacks every hour last year. We have more now from CBS's Jeff Begays. JBS USA CEO Andre Nagira says the decision to pay the $11 million ransom was very difficult, but it had to be made. The meat distributor's business nearly ground to a halt with plants shutting down, impacting thousands of workers and contractors across the country. Aren't we just inviting uh, more attacks uh, when you pay off these thugs? Today on Capitol Hill, lawmakers pressed FBI Director Christopher Wray on what companies should do in these situations. It is our policy, it is our guidance uh, from the FBI that uh, Companies should not pay the ransom. But they are. When a ransomware attack shut down its operations last month, gasoline supplier Colonial Pipeline also says it paid off the hackers. It was the hardest decision I've made in my 39 years in the energy industry. The number of organizations paying ransom has risen to 32% so far this year. 46% of companies that paid the ransom did receive access to their data, but the data was corrupted. 3% of companies paid a ransom and didn't get their data back at all. They are looking for targets. Hacking for dollars. They're looking for the next big juicy target that's going to pay out. The FBI director said today that cyber threats are increasing almost exponentially and that the volume of money paid in ransomware has tripled over the last year. Nora. All right, Jeff Begays, thank you. At Carvana, we treat every customer like we would treat our own moms. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to start with an important news uh, actually from the last year. And we all are, are exposed to cybercrime news and hacking news. And uh, statistically in, in the previous, in the previous sessions, I mentioned about the uh, increasing nature of cybercrime, but the last three years has been more uh, effective and hackers gained a lot more from especially ransomware attacks. And this actually uh, highly impacted the United States cyber system. And uh, the cost of cybersecurity is on the rise and the need for uh, more staff and personnel and better equipment and better cybersecurity system is in more need. And uh, I, I'll start my presentation now. And the topic, as I mentioned, uh, of this week, actually, uh, hacking and hackers. Uh, in this session, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, understanding hack hacking, and we, we will comprehend hacking culture and the environment related with uh, hacking, recognize common tools hackers use, and identify uh, actually the common terminology that the hackers uh, use uh, within the environment of cyberspace. And actually, uh, we see this uh, picture uh, or sign a lot uh, when a computer system is hacked. So I want to start with this picture. And uh, one of the uh, first thing that uh, criminal justice 
agencies or law enforcement personnel that uh, focus actually is the criminal profiling. And it's better for us to understand the profiling of hackers in order to comprehend how hackers behave and what type of tools or equipments they've been using or benefiting. And there have been numerous cybercrime uh, pro profiles developed over the years and most early efforts, efforts focused on computer intrusions and hacking offenses. So in this session, we are going to uh, focus on hacking offenses. And uh, the common targets of hackers are usually uh, individual computer users and uh, private in the industry and government. So they've got three different types of actually uh, targets, individual computer users, private industry, and uh, governments and hacking uh, normally is thought of something uh, that's uh, evil or something that's not ethical or that's related with uh, actually deviance but in a real life as the uh, considering the term developed uh, not from directly from the computer science hacks can be uh, understood in a different manner, such as airline fre frequent flyer programs can be hacked, card counting in a blackjack is a hack, and sports are hacked all the time. So there are many types of hacking and it, it can be uh, performed in a different area than uh, just uh, considering the cyber systems. And uh, the definition of hacking varies uh, by scholars and uh, actually there's no one unique definition in terms of hacking, but uh, of course there are some similarities and differences and Dr. Holt's uh, definition of, of hacking is uh, uh, actually a very comprehensive that involves not only uh, ethical hacking, but also uh, hacking that's performed by black hat hackers. Uh, according to this definition, a hack involves the modification of technology, such as the alteration of computer hardware or software in order to allow it to be used in innovative ways. So with this definition, whether it's legitimate or legitimate has an illegitimate purposes, Hacking has some sort of a, an innovative way of doing something that's uh, supported by the technology. And according to CISA, it is the unauthorized use of or access to computers or networks by exploiting identified security vulnerabilities. So CISA's uh, definition is quite uh, actually different from Dr. Holt's definition. And uh, when we look at this definition, it's more of a definition written with a cybersecurity perspective, not just uh, with a criminological or sociological perspective. So it's different from Dr. Holt's definition, although there are some uh, overlapping uh, things that are uh, making uh, the understanding uh, similar. And uh, a hacker must utilize vulnerabilities in, our, in order to be able to hack into a computer system or flaws uh, in a software or hardware or people. And uh, in this definition, uh, people are also involved as, an, as a victim of hacking. So keep in mind that hacking is a very comprehensive definition. It's just, it's not limited with just tools or hardware or software, you can also hack a system through a person or people. So vulnerability is one of the most important things uh, to start hacking. And we should first define and understand uh, vulnerability. By the way, I like this picture to define vulnerability. 
The vulnerability is any weakness in the computational logic. So it's it's uh, kind of a mistake on the one sense and on the other uh, hand, there, there's a flaw in the system uh, due to probably design of the system, uh, due to probably because of a, a logic or programming error. So it's a any weakness in the computational logic found in products or devices that could be exploited by a threat source. So there should be a threat source uh, taking advantage of a vulnerability and exploit the uh, targets, okay? And there is a, an example of a vulnerability report it says uh, attackers are actively exploiting an inadequately patched, patched flow in Microsoft Windows installer to gain admin rights on vulnerable systems. So when you look at this vulnerability report, it really overlaps with the definition of vulnerability. And uh, so understanding the definitions and concepts about hacking and uh, its related terms are quite important. A malicious hack often affects multiple, multiple groups at the same time. So it's, it's uh, usually a crime occurs towards a person or a couple of person. But in terms of malicious attack or hacks, it covers or incorporates often multiple groups at the same time. So it's, it's got more capacity to attack uh, against uh, victims. And it can be performed by individuals acting alone. So you, you might have a PC and you can attack uh, against, um, against your target. So remember I shared a video on the Blackboard. So you can look at uh, that video that's about a Russian hacker performing his uh, hacking activities just alone. And it can be performed in small groups or in conjunction with a foreign military or government. So there are many small groups, especially in the fraud section of hacking, uh, those groups uh, act uh, together and uh, try to skim the uh, target individual. When individual acts uh, actually without any sort of state backing. So there's no government behind that individual trying to hack. They are referred to as non-state, non-nation state sponsored actors, non-nation state sponsored actors, okay? They have no immediate affiliation with an organization, okay? So if there's no affiliation, that then that person is a non nation state sponsored actor. So here on the slide, I'd like to share some of the basic methods uh, hackers use. And uh, one of the most primitive or uh, easy type of hacking is just glancing over an authorized user's shoulder. When the user is logging, logging in, it could be a computer, it could also be a, an ATM machine. So they're uh, basically trying to observe your PIN number. So this is one of the easiest way, ways of hacking. And the other is recording authorized users login keystrokes on a video. So uh, remember that hackers uh, can always take advantage of additional tools as, as well as uh, uh, coding or using malware. And they can also search for nodes on your desk or computers around. So be aware that you do not uh, leave your PIN number or password on your, uh, on your desk or in an environment that anyone can reach uh, or access it easily. And some of the other basic methods that hackers use, and they usually uh, call system operators and impersonate uh, yourself and claiming to be an employee who forgot the password. So 
they already collect some information from your Facebook or they can directly come to your company and get some information about you. That person might even be a person you might already know. But uh, usually they uh, or hackers use uh, social media uh, to collect information about you. And the other method that they are using is trashing. Uh, we usually as a human being don't give importance to things that we throw in trash, but hackers can take advantage of searching through the trash and collect information about your company, uh, try to find uh, uh, notes about your password and try to estimate your password by collecting such information from uh, actually searching through the trash. So be careful about it. And searching for authorized users' passwords by reading email messages stored on comp company computers, emails are not secure, and you, know, you can you should always lock your computer and uh, try to be cautious about writing the things uh, important. Uh, on your network credentials. And uh, they also perform guessing. Different com they try actually uh, different combinations to attack your password or hack uh, your password. So be careful about uh, uh, your password. Your password needs to be uh, complicated enough uh, so that hackers uh, cannot actually estimate your password. And uh, the first thing that hackers uh, actually uh, try to take advantage of is uh, the exploit. Exploit is a program or piece of code designed to find and take advantage of actually a security flaw. So there's a vulnerability that comes with a security flaw uh, in an application or computer system. So what hackers trying to do is to exploit that vulnerability, okay? Typically uh, for malicious purposes, uh, such as installing a malware, a malware. They try to uh, install a malware or on your system so that they can uh, control your system or they can get information or recordings from your computer. So exploit is basically is a way of uh, attacking to a vulnerable system. So how does an, uh, how does an exploit work? Basically, uh, an attacker uh, plans his or her attacks here. And uh, for exploits to be effective, uh, that many vulnerabilities are required for an attacker to initiate a serious of suspicious operations to set up and exploit. So there are many states that we will go over in our play, in our feature classes that uh, hackers uh, have to uh, plan uh, beforehand. And vulnerabilities are a result of a software or system architecture bug. So there might be there might be a bug on your system, and if that a bug is discovered by a hacker, then they can take advantage of that bug and attack against the system, as especially taking advantage of uh, vulnerabilities in the system. And finally, attackers uh, write their code and attack to the system by taking advantage of vulnerabilities. And they basically inject various types of malware into the system. So consider this system on the right uh, side of the screen. Uh, see, they're trying to take advantage of the bug and uh, try to inject a type of malware or uh, code written in a sort of a, a language that could be uh, effective for hacking. And they attack uh, or take advantage of the vulnerabilities of the system. And general, general classification of exploits uh, can be divided uh, to actually two major uh, 
concepts or there are known uh, actually exploits and there are unknown exploits. Known exploits, the vulnerabilities are uh, that are known by uh, the by usually the public or cybersecurity pro professionals, or that could be something known by uh, hackers or black hat hackers. So the second type of uh, this classification is that uh, zero day exploit. If the vulnerability is not known by anybody and an exploit that exploit is referred uh, to as a zero day exploit. When it's used uh, to attack a vulnerability that has been identified but not yet patched, uh, th this is a zero day exploit and also known as a zero day vulnerability. And what makes a vulnerability a zero day uh, actually attack or zero day vulnerability is the security software, software vulnerabilities uh, usually the case can come in many different forms, including unencrypted data, which should uh, actually, which was supposed to be encrypted. There can be broken algorithms, bugs or weak passwords. So, you might think that uh, why the software de de developers making these uh, mistakes and causing these vulnerabilities. Actually, uh, the uh, programming is quite different and it's very hard to pay attention every bit of uh, coding or lines when you're writing. An average operating system is usually written, written uh, probably over hundred or thousands of lines or millions of lines. So uh, it's not that easy to control every bit of the kernel of the operating system. This, so keep in mind that uh, writing an operating system is quite uh, difficult. Writing an application that is comprehensive is quite difficult and it requires uh, paying attention in every uh, bit of coding. Once the vulnerability is discovered, uh, it's no longer considered a zero day uh, vulnerability. So the condition is that it has to be uh, unknown by public and it, not, it shouldn't have already been patched. And uh, I'll give you some more examples about uh, web-based uh, security vulnerabilities. One of the common uh, form of attacks are SQL injection attacks, cross-site spreaking, cross-site uh, scripting is also another example about the web-based uh, security vulnerabilities. And there's also broken authentication code or security misconfiguration. So a misconfiguration can also lead to vulnerabilities and uh, hackers can uh, take advantage of uh, such vulnerabilities. Uh, here you can see an ex a sample exploit. Uh, look at the uh, figure on the right. Uh, see that uh, attacker creates exploit to target software vulnerability and exploit may arrive via attachment comprised uh, websites and social networking websites, or the attacker directly can attack to the target uh, system. So there are many opportunities and alternatives for hackers to attack a, a vulnerable system. Uh, so where all this comes from, uh, these are actually uh, threats to the cybersecurity system of the United States. Uh, threat is defined by FBI as malicious uh, cyber activity threatens the public's safety, national and economic security. So uh, this actually definition resembles uh, with our uh, first uh, definitions that uh, remember we divided uh, hackers activities in terms of 
uh, in individuals, corporations, and uh, governments. And here we see that FPI also defines, makes, or gives a definition similar to uh, the previous uh, definition that we actually explained. So safety of uh, public or individuals, national and economic, in terms of economy, you can uh, interpret uh, it as actually uh, corporations. So there are a lot of cybersecurity threats uh, that the systems or uh, these network infrastructure have been exposed. So the, one of the first threats to cybersecurity is human threats. It includes insiders and outsiders where many types of cyber criminals take part. So there could be, in, there could be insiders and outsiders, not just uh, the outsider as we usually know. And there are a lot of organized crime criminal groups. There are cyber uh, terrorists as well, ransomware groups and intelligence agents in terms of the human threats. And there are also natural threats such as earthquakes, fire, floods, you know, hurricanes. So you need to store your backup, backups into a secure safe that's uh, not uh, vulnerable to uh, fires or even earthquakes. There are important da data that you should always keep them in a secure place. And let's look at the other threats, technical threats. We have talked talk about some of the vulnerabilities such as software vulnerabilities, hardware failures. It's another threat. If there's a hardware failure, then uh, your system is not going to work, obviously. And the complexity of security technologies also uh, creates another threat to uh, cybersecurity experts or uh, the system that serves to the public. And there are also physical threats su su such as the CCTV, uh, CCTV problems, fingerprint sensors, and other types of biometric failures. So these are the physical failures or threats that you should actually know. And environmental threats is another threat that contain power outs and traffic problems uh, can it also be caused because of uh, cybersecurity threats and there are also operational threats that stand for uh, direct impact on cybersecurity that's comprised of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We will talk about confidentiality and uh, integrity and availability in our future classes. But keep in mind that it, it is the core concept of cybersecurity, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Keep in mind. And another term that's very useful to understand the hacking activities is cybersecurity breach. A security breach occurs in any incident that results in unauthorized access to computer data, applications, networks, or devices. So basically, it's, uh, there is no authorization and a person or group of person, or it might be a government attacking to the US, let's say, as an example, a cybersecurity system and Without any authorization, they are uh, taking advantage of the vulnerabilities on the uh, computer data applications or networks or devices. It results in information being accessed uh, uh, is actually without authorization. So keep in mind that the basic feature of cybersecurity, one of the basic uh, feature of the uh, cybersecurity defense is authorization. And uh, typically it occurs when 
an intruder or hacker, hacker is able to bypass the security uh, system. And technically there's a distinction between uh, a security breach and a data breach. So cybersecurity breach is that, let's give an example, uh, if as for instance, a team uh, gets into your office, then this is a cybersecurity breach. And if he can uh, collect the information, take the important, uh, for instance, copyrighted information from your desk and take it with, with him, then that's, uh, that's another matter and it's called as data breach. <clears throat> Hacking can be used to gather uh, personal data or information of use to criminals, and they can deface websites or launch uh, DOS or DDoS attacks. So we'll talk about a lot on DDoS attacks and their very common way of attacking uh, to a computer system uh, in these days, uh, whether it's for hacking purposes, whether it's for especially uh, hacktivism or including protesting a government agency or organization. And what do cyber atta attackers target? Actually, they can attack to business financial data. Keep, keep in mind that this is important to understand cybercrime investigation. You need to first identify what kind of or which organizations or individuals can be under uh, attack in the future. So business financial data is one of the most targeted, uh, actually organ organizations uh, information and client lists of an organization, customers financial data, customer databases, including personally identifiable information. So they're usually trying to attack databases that includes your credit card information, your personally identifiable information are being attacked. And email addresses and login credentials, intellectual property, I just giving a, an example about a corporate, corporate uh, issue that a burglary can occur to collect uh, information from your office. And uh, like trade secret, secrets or product designs and IT infrastructure access can also happen. And uh, sensitive personal data can be collected or US governments, government departments and agencies information can be collected through uh, hacking or attacking to such vulnerable systems. And uh, here we have a Venn diagram, Venn diagram uh, that was actually developed by Dr. Holt and Basler. And uh, when, when it comes to hacking, there are four major issues important to identify the hacker, hacker profiles. So the first one is theft, and the second one is fraud and terror and espionage. But that, that could be more, okay? So there, there may be more motivations or reasons for hackers. The, this definition is a concept, but it needs to be improved. And there are two different, uh, there are many different hats in terms of hacking. And we, we are gonna go over these different hats. Uh, when we divide hackers by intention, there are black hat hackers, criminals who break into your computer networks with malicious intent. So in the world of, in the world of uh, cybersecurity and hackers, the uh, intention of uh, activities in terms of infiltration of systems are usually defined by colors. 
black hat hackers are the criminals that have mal malicious intent. What they are doing uh, is absolutely an Ill illegal activity. And remember, there is no authorization and they take advantage of exploits by uh, they take, take advantage of vulnerabilities by using exploits. And ethical hackers are the ones usually professionals or cybersecurity experts uh, usually use their, they usually use their capabilities and uh, to uncover security failings, which uh, we mentioned as a vulnerability to help safeguard organizations from dangerous hackers. So organizations usually hire ethical hackers to figure out or to identify the vulnerability of their systems. And there are also gray hat hackers. These are in between uh, black hat hackers and ethical hackers. They often look for vulnerabilities in a system without the owner's permission or knowledge. So the owners of the system is not aware that their system is under attack. Is under attack. But they are usually uh, reporting these uh, vulnerabilities so that uh, they can gain, uh, the hackers usually report these vulnerabilities to the organization so that uh, uh, the organization fixes the uh, vulnerability and uh, that gray hacker takes advantage of uh, a reputation uh, or may get some uh, reward from the company. There is an, another division between the uh, uh, actually hacking concept. There are hackers and trackers, and they are also classified uh, by their intentions. And as I mentioned, black hat ha hacking has a malicious uh, black hat hacking has a malicious malicious uh, purpose. That's actually in turn means a, a black hat hacker is also a cracker. So that person is cracking uh, a computer system, which in turn becomes a crime. And by means of especially using computer systems. So uh, let's look at the differentiation between white hats and black hats. And uh, in terms of their motivation, if the attack if the attacker is motivated or driven by personal gain, including profit through extortion or other device or other devious methods of collecting money from the victim, then that's actually a black hat activity. But uh, if the white hat hacker is pre-authorized, authorization, remember, is quite important in understanding hacking, if that hacker is already authorized and uh, perform activities to disclose uh, security vulnerabilities, then that person is a white hat hacker. And uh, quite interesting that uh, uh, there are bounty uh, there are meta bug bounty. There's a meta, meta uh, bug bounty program uh, that's uh, announced by Facebook. Uh, meta uh, recognizes the value of external, external security and, and actually announces that if a person uh, brings an information about the vulnerability of a, a Facebook application, or Facebook website, then uh, he, he or she is being rewarded. So this is an opportunity for those people who likes to hack system and to gain some reward or reputation. So bounty hunting is, uh, this is a different kind of a bounty hunting. 
uh, uh, actually, uh, we are usually we usually hear a lot about bounty hunters on t on media or TV, but this is a this is like a modern type of bounty hunting. Uh, for example, in 2018, uh, a person found a way to uh, brute force the, uh, the rest to restore password key for Facebook on its mobile website uh, because Facebook did not uh, check uh, for the number of times that you entered the incorrect PIN number. So that person was rewarded $20,000 by Facebook uh, in, in regards to the bug bounty uh, program. So there are people trying, constantly trying to actually uh, analyze the cybersecurity system of companies and gain a reputation or reward. So this is actually very useful for companies uh, and a lot of people can try this and cannot be uh, successful uh, so this is a good way of testing. And if one person finds out a security vulnerability and reports it to the Facebook, then that's absolutely fantastic for uh, the company because without uh, hiring a person or uh, a number of people uh, in your uh, company, you, you just pay $20,000 and you get a very uh, promising results by white hat hacker. And we see another example, Facebook awards $30,000 bounty for exploit exposing uh, in regard to its private Instagram content. You can later uh, check these news. And uh, one of the most searched questions on the internet is that uh, how to hack Facebook Many people uh, really or bad, badly want to hack into uh, someone's uh, Facebook account, but it's uh, obviously not that easy. There are tons of websites on the internet that uh, describes how to hack a Facebook account, but keep, keep in mind that they're usually trying to hack the, the person who is searching this uh, terminology. So. You, you might be trying to hunt someone's Facebook account, but you might uh, also be a victim of uh, a, a hunter on the, or hacker on the uh, web. And these are usually uh, these uh, Facebook account, accounts takeover or, or account takeover uh, is actually uh, defined as uh, taking is actually defined as hacking into someone's uh, account and retrieving or uh, obtaining that first password. And this is actually called as account take over uh, due to security vulnerability. So uh, your account could be sold in the black market illegally uh, and there are millions of dollars actually uh, going around on the dark web so basically if your account uh, actually hacked by someone that means it's a account take over uh, for you so they can sell it uh, sell your uh, account information on the black market and they can also get instant fame especially if the person's account is belong to a famous person. And uh, account taker is a form of identity theft or fraud. And uh, there's a malicious activity on the account uh, take over by a third party. And it actually get, that person actually gains access to users account credentials, account information such as uh, your username and password and more information about the personally protected information. Uh, by pausing the uh, real user, cyber criminals can change the account details, uh, send out uh, phishing emails. Uh, I'm sure you have, you have already heard or experienced 
experience experienced such a, a can take hours that one of your for instance friends sent information that's very unusual requesting uh that from you requesting help from you that's very unusual and that is actually a sign of an account take over uh it uh this account takeover happens then cyber criminals gain access to your online accounts and uh, the potential targets of account takeover takeover includes uh, social media and especially email accounts uh, and especially especially those uh, uh, who use to shop or handle bank or credit card transactions credit card transactions should be more careful and there are uh, norms in terms of the hackers Uh, especially, especially the, in terms of the computer under, underground norms, the pres presence of technology is important for the uh, underground norms or rules, and secrecy is also important that the uh, hacker groups or black hat hackers do not want to share their uh, real personal identity, and there should be a mastery about the continual learning you should always be developing yourself or advancing your knowledge to become a skilled hacker or to be known as a skilled hacker hacker in the uh, underground norms and there are uh, two types of hackers uh, there are those insiders and those who are known as outsiders uh, we uh, hear a lot about outsiders, but the insiders are also quite important. An example to an insider attack is Timothy, Timothy Lloyd. Actually, uh, he was found guilty of attacking to his uh, previous company he used to work. He actually used a, a logical, a software time bomb uh, bomb after uh, he left his uh, previous job and uh, about a certain time later the malware he injected to the system actually destroyed the programs in the company and caused uh, a lot of uh, economic and financial stress in the company and uh, uh, it cost Omega more than 10 million million dollars of losses uh, and eventually led to the layoffs about uh, 80 personnel so an insider hacker can be very detrimental and effective and it's usually very hard to find those insider hackers and uh, those hackers insider hackers uh, actions may go unnoticed uh, usually uh, when we work in a similar environments uh, it's actually very uh, hard to notice someone is uh, breaking into the computer systems and uh, usually the insider hackers uh, place a backdoor backdoor in programs that can be accessed uh, to cause damage actually in case they are fired or mistreated so uh, you should be aware of uh, such hackers that uh, they can or they might have already have, have a problem within the company and they may be uh, trying to uh, take their vengeance. Then, and there are also outsider hackers, which we all know or hear a lot about outsider hackers. Hackers not employed by industry or government agencies are those uh, outsider hackers or claim to be outsider hacker and they can cause damage or referred to as outsider hacker those are the hackers that we don't really know of or have no affiliation with the company or corporation and i'll give you some uh, examples of the uh, hackers uh, and i'll give you a few of them yet there are many robert uh, morris uh, he was a student 
uh, at Cornell University and uh, he was a bright student and he created what's considered to be the first worm uh, on the internet. So a worm is a, is a sort of malicious software that self replicates within the network and contamin contaminates uh, the computers and it actually results in widespread slowdowns and affecting affecting the whole internet. So worms can be very detrimental for the internet users or network users. And Kevin Le Lee uh, Paulson, and he, uh, he's another example hacker in this session. And he took over the telephone lines of the entire Los Angeles and he called the uh, he informed the uh, radio station that he will be the 102nd caller in order to win a Porsche 499. So he, he's actually the first person who was banned uh, using the internet after his re release, but obviously it was for a limited time. And Paulson uh, is now an editor at Wired magazine. So if you'd like to hear about cybersecurity news and cybersecurity, uh, cybercrime news, Wired Magazine is an old magazine. It has got uh, some history, history on it, actually. So I suggest you reading Wired Magazine as well. And David Smith uh, is another hacker who created the Melissa virus and uh, distributed this, this virus, virus was uh, distributed as an email attachment and uh, actually disabled a number of safeguards of Microsoft Word, uh, Microsoft Word 97 and Microsoft Word 2000 and, and designed to email itself to entries in users address book. So you, uh, it was taking over the users address book and uh, sending uh, um, quite a number of email to other users and uh, the virus was able to delete files on the infected system. So it was another uh, actually penetration performed by David Smith in 1999. And uh, the other actually virus is uh, called Anna Kornikova uh, because uh, uh, there was an email uh, with an attachment of a uh, uh, tennis uh, player Anna Kornika and it caused problems in email serv servers worldwide. So there are quite a number of uh, hackers that we can go, go through, go over, but uh, these are the some examples that I wanted to share uh, at first. And uh, another concept that I'd like to address is the testing. And uh, cybersecurity is being tested, is always being tested iteratively. And one of the concepts that you should that you should know first is offensive security. And offensive security is also kind of related with hacking. It's almost like a hacking activity, but usually performed by those authorized uh, people. Uh, it's about testing security postures from the viewpoint of an adversary or competitor and embraced by organizations regardless of their size or industry. And governments also can take advantage of uh, using these offensive security uh, principle. One of the uh, example of this uh, uh, actually testing method is penetration testing, also known as pen testing which means computer security experts use uh, and detect and take advantage of security vulnerabilities within the system or within an application. These experts later uh, known as uh, white hat hackers uh, facilitate uh, this by simulating real world attacks by criminal hackers known as uh, black hat hackers. So, Trying to, trying to impersonate uh, black hat hackers, white hat hackers inform the administration or organization about the security vulnerabilities, but they actually use methods that 
actually uh, that's actually uh, performed by hackers. And uh, as I already mentioned, authorization is the process of obtaining approval before collect, uh, obtaining approval uh, from the system but, uh, or system administrators. But in terms of penetration testing and authorization needs to be taken beforehand uh, so that uh, it could, uh, the authorization could be used to test the cybersecurity systems of an organization. And these are usually very expensive uh, when you look at or search through the internet. It's not that uh, easy to get your system tested. Uh, and there are many cybersecurity organizations and it's uh, hard to pick one of them based on your income of your company. And uh, after the authorization is actually obtained, uh, both the penetration tester and the company uh, is actually being audited and need to agree upon the, uh, they both actually need to agree upon the uh, scope of the test. So there can be limits uh, or the company can put limits to actually the organization, to the uh, penetration testing organization or company. Authorization is the process of uh, actually obtaining approval before conducting any test. And uh, we'll go through the different types of pen testing. And uh, the first uh, type of pen testing is black box, black box uh, pen testing. Actually in the black box pen testing or penetration testing, the uh, attacker or the white hat hacker doesn't know anything about the organization's cybersecurity system. So they, they're not aware of the security vulnerabilities and uh, they start off uh, on the same footing as a, uh, that a real hacker would. So they're basically hacking the system without having any knowledge and they don't know the internals or internal working of the uh, web applications, the software architecture, and the source code. This is kind of a harder way of uh, pen testing, but this can bring a lot of opportunity for the company if the black box, te black box testing uh, company is very professional, but that company has to be, the testing company has to be very professional. And in white box, te in white box uh, testing, uh, it's different or it's also called as clear box testing. The tester has full knowledge of the cybersecurity system of that company and access to both the source code and software, software architecture of the web. This is a very advantaged way of uh, testing. They can actually, uh, uh, the white box, box testers can actually uh, audit your uh, codes already written by your software developers and these experienced uh, testers can uh, see the vulnerabilities in your uh, source code or in your company's applications source code. The other advantage is that, uh, that a much more thorough pen test can be completed. So everything is open and uh, if the testers have enough of knowledge about the vulnerabilities uh, happened in the past with other companies, then that's another uh, advantage for uh, testers to perform. Uh, and it's very useful and it takes uh, less time usually. And gray box testing is another sort of testing is actually the tester is simulating an attack from the outside, but they got partial knowledge about the security system and they, a pen tester can focus their main efforts to what they already have known or what they already knew about cybersecurity system. So they can professionally analyze some of the security vulnerabilities in the company. And uh, as they know, or as they 
are testing, but they already are professional, then this key, this can give an advantage uh, to the gray box uh, testers. And the, the other reason could be the company being tested might not be uh, willing to disclose every bit of information or uh, every bit of code uh, in their uh, company. And they might be just willing to share some parts of their uh, security uh, credentials with the gray box testing company. And basically when we look at this uh, figure, the differences can be uh, easily seen in, in a black box testing. There's zero knowledge testing as an attacker and uh, in a white box uh, testing, uh, as you see, there's a full knowledge of the cybersecurity system and the network and, the, and they are testing as a developer. And, uh, you know, the developers have full grasp of knowledge in uh, usually in the network. And in gray, gray uh, box testing, uh, there's some knowledge and testing uh, as user with access to some data. So uh, gray box testers uh, usually do not have full information about the uh, network or the network uh, credentials. Another thing is that all of these uh, cybersecurity measures uh, considered insufficient. Why? Because uh, sometimes insiders can take more advantage. You know, think about as a castle uh, and uh, if, if there's an attack outside of a castle, then it's easier to see the problems coming outside. Uh, you can see the enemy, you can see the, how attack is being developed and you can have your walls secure your castle. But uh, in terms of uh, in insider uh, vulnerabilities, it's uh, usually harder. And uh, sometimes uh, insider, uh, insider problems or in insider threats uh, may not be uh, happening due to mal or evil purposes because uh, there are a lot of uh, people or personnel or employees who make mistakes during their work and they can be more of a threat to their company because a simple mistake can ruin the whole system in the company, right? Remember, remember the uh, colonial pipeline attack. Uh, in that attack, a person's uh, VPN cred credentials were lost and uh, outsider took advantage of the vagueness of that uh, personnel or employee. So it's different from uh, using the log information or uh, using some of the tools such as firewalls, intrusion, detection systems, and malware sandbox. There are many tools within the cybersecurity uh, environment actually that uh, the cybersecurity systems take advantage of it. But the fact is that the inside, when it comes to an insider, it's really hard to find the threat, especially, uh, especially, uh, it's, uh, especially if that person has a super user account uh, or if that person is actually the system administrator. Threat hunting investigations are usually based on a manual process, but nowadays it's, it's taking advantage of the addition of automation, machine learning, and also user and entity behavior analytics that uh, threat hunting, especially in the last few years, developed more than in the past, and it can take advantage of many uh, tools such as machine learning. And uh, we have talked uh, talk a lot about uh, various types of uh, cybersecurity measures, hacking and uh, what hackers have been doing in uh, some of the sample uh, hacks. But uh, how, do, how do hackers learn about hacking? 
and there are a plethora and plethora and availability of tools to perform the craft uh, for hacker for hackers and uh, there are not only available tools but they're usually they are very stable they are tested already and produced by hundreds of people so they are very consistent and they can be very complicated and one of the other advantage is that they are free and uh, people can learn how to manu manually compile and install software on a Linux machine. Usually, li usually Linux operating system is actually being utilized to perform hacking. And Linux is an operating system just like Windows, iOS, or Mac OS. And uh, it's one of the most pop popular platforms on the planet in terms of the operating systems. And uh, it has, it's actually very, very reliable operating system. And there is zero cost of entry. It's freely available. You can download it and you can have a, an operating system that's very uh, effective in terms of uh, analyzing, <coughs> analyzing cybersecurity systems. Uh, Linux was actually developed by Linus Torvalds, uh, who is now a US citizen. He was a Finnish undergraduate student and uh, he was trying to develop an alternative to the Minix uh, operating system. And he got some, some support uh, or uh, a great support from many uh, of the developers in the Minix. Uh, in in the Minix system, and uh, Linux is uh, as I mentioned fr freely distributable. If, uh, version of Unix actually and originally uh, developed in 1991, and Linux is authored and maintained by a group by a group of several thousands of developers. So <clears throat> there are thousands of supporters of the Linux operating systems. So this open environment gives advantage to the Linux operating system. It can be, it can be analyzed very easily. And the key tenants of the operating system of Linux is the freedom to run, run the program for any purpose, the freedom to study how the prog program works and change it to make it do what you wish. You can do anything with the Linux system. You are not restricted in doing anything in the operating system. The free this freedom, actually, the freedom to distribute copies of your, your modified versions to others if you are <coughs> expert or if your company is expert, then your company actually can distribute uh, it by developing their own system or their own operating uh, system of their version. Linux versions are actually called as distributions and nearly every distribution of Linux can be downloaded for free and they can be burned onto a disk and installed. And uh, why do hackers prefer Linux? The amount of control over the system is actually tremendous and uh, the user of the Linux operating system can have uh, privileges that uh, Windows operating systems usually do not provide the users. They are designed around a strongly integrated uh, command line interface so there are many comments that you can use over the Linux operating system that can control the applications and the operating system. And you have a very big flexibility over the Linux uh, operating system to the use of command line. And you can customize all aspects of your operating system. They, this gives actually hackers and Linux more control over their system. 
So it's basically the hacker and the operating system are very much intermingled. And Linux operating system is lighter and more portable, portable and uh, users of Linux system can carry they, those information to uh, or use those information in another system by using some virtual uh, softwares. And here you see the popular Linux distributions. There are many Linux uh, distributions, actually. There are many operating systems for hacking and we'll go over these operating systems. And these are also important for cybercrime investigations. Kali Linux is a security distribution of Linux specifically designed for digital forensics and penetration testing. It has got so many features that it can be used for penetration testing. And this operating system can encrypt uh, the full disk. You can easily automate and customize the Kali Linux operating system installation on the network. And you can have support for USB live installs and it has a forensics mode, which is very important to investigate cybercrime that can be used for forensic work. And uh, it's got a pre-installed penetration testing application. So there are opportunities for, opportunities for pen testers as well. And another operating system for actually uh, hacking is Parrot operating system. And it has an easy to use editor for software development. This platform actually enables you to surf the uh, web privately and securely, which is another advantage for hackers. And hackers can use Parrot operating system to perform vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, or for computer forensics. So it's, it's got greater capacity and you can use Parrot for a majority of your tasks. And it's available as a lightweight software that runs with limited resources. So it doesn't require much of a resource. And this is an advantage for, an advantage for an individual hacker that uh, even with a little bit of resource, a person can become a hacker and use uh, the penetration testing tools. And it provides support for experts to help you. Then that's another advantage. And this hacking operating system has distributed infrastructure with dedicated content distribution network, which is another advantage for this operating system. system. And you can share this operating system with others and this give more flexibility. And the other operating system that's useful for penetration testing is the black box Linux. And uh, it's Ubuntu-based open source operating system. The system also provides a network analysis. Backbox also has a toolkit in it uh, that's needed for ethical hacking. So it helps you uh, with computer forensics analysis like uh, the other operating systems. And it also contains minimum resource for your system. And this hacking environment, op this hacking operating system provides easy to use those to desktop environments and it enables you uh, to sim simulate to simulate an attack on an application or network. And it's one of the basic or different features is that it's, it has stability and speed. And thank you very much for listening to this uh, session. I hope uh, you all enjoyed about this uh, session and heard a lot about hackers and hacking. We'll go more about this in the future classes. I wish you a happy week and a healthy week. Uh, thank you all.